Good morning. We have made it to day 30, friends, of our 33-day journey. We have got three more days. This is awesome. This is also considered day four of week three in our books. And let's dig in. It's Lisa back with you today on our Marian pilgrimage. And our theme is the love of Christ for the cross. All right, a few quick notes if you're live, go ahead, drop your name. I'd like to know who I'm praying with this morning. You can of course post your comments, questions, prayer intentions anytime. If you're catching the replay later, uh, go ahead, leave a intention, a comment, a like. We want this to reach more people that Our Lady is trying to bring. We'd like to keep praying for you intentionally. All right, we're going to start with our morning offering. So let's see the sign of the cross. Your Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day for all the intentions of your sacred heart in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world, for the salvation of souls, the reparation of sins, the reunion of all Christians, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. All right, go to page 12 in your book. We are going to start by invoking the Holy Spirit together. Let's say this. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Lord, send forth your spirit and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who instructs the hearts of your faithful with the light of your Holy Spirit, make us responsive to his inspirations so that we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to turn to page 106 in our consecration books. Our focus for this week is growing in the knowledge of Jesus. All right. The love of Christ for the cross. We begin by reading from the gospel according to Mark. Chapter 8. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not of the side of God. You are not on the side of God, but of man. But of men. Sorry. So powerful reflection this morning, and especially for those of us that are in Lent currently, this is what we're preparing for, right? For Christ to do this. It's just picture being in this scene, though, of hearing this for the first time. Like, who gets raised from the dead? That would be rejected by the elders and the chief priests. So these are, you know, the respected religious authorities, the scribes to be killed, and then three days again rise later. And he plainly shared all of this. Good morning, Tim. Great to be with you, too. It says he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan. For you are not on the side of God, but of men. So Peter rebukes Jesus, and then Jesus rebukes Peter. And what was in their hearts? Of course, 
let's try to imagine, you know, with Peter, that's his, that's his friend, that's his master, that's his rabbi, his teacher. He doesn't want him to be rejected and killed. And of course, in the heart of Christ is already a love for the cross. So he knows that that's God's will for him. And Peter's not speaking into that because he's, he's doing that selfishly. Of course, he doesn't want his friend to suffer and die. But today, we're going to be talking a bit about the cross and about suffering. Let's look to the reflection of St. Louis de Montfort here. Incarnate wisdom loved the cross from his infancy. At his coming into the world, while in his mother's womb, he received it from his eternal father. He placed it deep in his heart, there to dominate his life, saying, my God and my father, I choose this cross when I was in your bosom. I chose this cross when I was in your bosom. I choose it now in the womb of my mother. I love it with all my strength and I place it deep in my heart to be my spouse and my mistress. I hadn't thought of Jesus doing this from the womb. How profound that he received this from God and placed it deep in his heart. It says there to dominate his life, understanding from before he was even born that this was the call and he chose it. He chose it before even he was in his mother's womb, because it says, I chose this cross when I was in your bosom, he told this to the Lord. And I choose it now in the womb of my mother. I chose it then, I choose it now from all eternity. And for all eternity, he chooses it. I love it with all my strength and I place it deep in the heart, in my heart to be my spouse and my mistress. How intimately intertwined he is then, then it would be his spouse and mistress. And he would be obedient to it and intertwined completely with it. And that he loves it. So this reminded me of a quote that I wrote, a blog a couple years back on reflecting on Good Friday. You know, any of us that are preparing for Holy Week right now, which is just around the corner for our, our first group here, it's a really powerful time. And we have got some great, you know, passion tied um, tools for you. But this blog, as I was reflecting on Good Friday and different um, meditations and what different saints had said, there was a quote by St. Thomas of Villanova that I've always really loved speaking of our Lord with the cross. He said, but Jesus did not wait for the executioner to place the cross on his shoulders. Of his own accord, he stretched out his hands and eagerly laid hold of it and placed it on his wounded shoulders. Come, he says, come, beloved cross. It is now 33 years that I have been sighing and searching for you. I embrace you. I clasp you to my heart. For you are the altar on which I shall sacrifice my life out of love for my flock. Isn't that beautiful? He didn't wait for the executioner to put the cross on his shoulder. He stretched out his hand of his own accord. He eagerly laid hold of it. He placed it on his own wounded shoulders. I mean, what he had already suffered was so much. And now to do that, 
and he called it his beloved, and he had been searching and sighing and embraced and clasped it to his heart. You are the altar on which I shall sacrifice my life out of love for my flock. Thank you, Lord. I'll drop a link in the notes uh, to that. We've got uh, more on Good Friday there that you can kind of go and choose the passion of Christ and some beautiful reflections and downloads. One that, that Tammy wrote also. So look a little bit on now as we're thinking and reflecting on the cross and what God's asking of us through that. So his example reveals to us that we're called to suffer differently, right? We spoke about this. Uh, Tam and I did a talk last October at the Catholic Family Life Association. We were just speaking about suffering, actually, how our brokenness leads to deeper communion. And so part of this, I'm pulling from that talk, which was reflection from JP2, his apostolic letter, Salvafici Dolores, which is the Christian meaning of human suffering. And in this call to suffer differently, we can rediscover that through our faith, which is enriching it in its content and its meaning if we're looking through the eyes of faith. So this is a supernatural way, right? Because suffering on a human level, we, we don't want it. We will do anything to avoid it. It's Our flesh is repelled by it. Supernaturally, it's rooted in the divine mystery of the redemption of the world. And it's deeply human, is what JP2 says, because in it, the person discovers himself, his own humanity, his own dignity, and his own mission. Let's think about that in your own life, in your own sufferings. Have they not drawn you to know yourself? your humanity, your dignity, and your mission? If we allow it, suffering can deepen our sense of connection. I realized for myself that it was more profound to realize that I am loved even in my brokenness and suffering. A cross becomes a place of encounter. It leads us to the crucified cross. So in our own sufferings, we encounter the crucified Christ. I remember a few weeks ago when I was in a meeting, how the Lord just showed me for a moment a glimpse of what it is to restore. And when we're using our stories and we're sharing from our own sufferings, what that does to another. And he was showing me that it's like the crucified Christ in you reaching out to the suffering of another it was such a beautiful vision to see. That encounter, we encounter Christ and we encounter him in each other through our own sufferings. And we encounter our humanity too. We come to know the love also which led Christ to the cross. That's what the Pope said. That's what's more profound than the cross, right? The cross was an object of execution. He's the one that transformed it by his love, his suffering, his sacrifice. So we see in that that he takes what was intended for evil and redeems it. And as Christians, as Catholics specifically, we understand that there's a redemptive nature then when we unite our suffering to his. The scriptures show us this, that we're called to be sharers in the suffering of Christ. You see that 
For example, in 2 Corinthians 4, St. Paul speaks about this. So here it is, the difference in this Christian view of suffering and that this is relational. Jesus doesn't just leave us on our own. He suffers with us. He suffers with us. I think that's that's a huge difference. Yeah, Tammy's saying it's so hard to embrace suffering and not just allow it. It's absolutely true. You know, isn't just, well, this is happening. This sucks, you know. Oh, of, of coming to embrace this as part of the will of God, understanding that it's either from his permissive will, he's allowing it, or his direct rule, because he knows that there's something that he's trying to bring about through that suffering. But I think the difference then becomes, I know for me, and I've, I've talked about, you know, my my own grief, my own trauma, my struggles with infertility for uh, for the past 12 years on, my, on the blog. And when I started to understand, and I've heard this in the interviews that I've been doing with couples that are carrying this cross, when they can understand that Jesus is with them, that he is suffering in their suffering, that he weeps with us, it, it became a whole different understanding of this. Because I think it, you know, sometimes we just feel like, are, are you there? And if it's been going on for a long time, especially, or if it's very painful, do you hear me if we don't see something changing? No. But to think of the Lord so tender in that way, and that he completely understands what it is to be human and to suffer, and that he raised that, he redeemed that, is just... That's what brings us to the place where we can start to. I think if we can look at it through eyes that know that we're not alone, because that's that's what suffering can do, right? Is that it, it makes us feel like we're isolated and hopeless, that we're powerless. If we can come back to the Lord with it, if we can come back into community, like we try to do here with each other, through our prayers, through consecration, through showing up for each other, there's the clincher. All right, let's go back to page 106. Our resolution today, in your prayer today, ask the Lord through the intercession of Mary for the grace of a genuine love for the cross. Got to ask for the grace for it. Because that's not a human, <laughs> again, that's not a human inclination to be like, yes, I love it. I want it. Let's do this. If we can ask for the grace to embrace it, if we can ask for the grace to love genuinely, God will help us. Mary will help us. All right, let's look to, uh, if you guys have any intentions, go ahead and list them. We're about to move into our time for communal intercession. We're going to start by doing the Jesus Living and Mary prayer. That's page 13 in your book. O oh, Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in your servant, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your gifts, in the perfection of your ways, in the truth of your virtues, in the communion of your mysteries. Subdue within me the power of flesh and demon by your Holy Spirit, for the glory of God the Father. Amen. All 
All right, we are going to continue to pray for those that have given us their intercessions and for anything else that we share during this time. So let's really think of ourselves placing these intentions on our altar here and your home altar, taking them from your heart, giving them to Our Lady to give to Jesus. And let's believe in the power of Our Lady to intercede and move on our behalf. We pray for the healing of Mariana's family in body, mind, and soul. We pray for Mary Kay Sound to gain a summer internship. We pray for Bill's health, healing, and conversion. We pray for Michelle's intentions, her leadership, and her family. We pray for the teachers, leadership, and funding for Mary Seat of Wisdom, Montessori, and Caritas schools. I pray for our priests, deacons, religious, and consecrated. I pray for Christy and her focus on what God's calling and asking of her. For Anna, her upcoming decisions and conversations. For Leo and Zuzu and their school struggles and Amy and Colin in assisting them. For Carla's family, her vocation, finding balance in life and work. We pray for Jan's health, for the stability of Our Lady of Grace Catholic School, for Melissa's husband to find a job soon, for Susan's daughter, Lauren, for Suzanne's family, especially her husband and daughter, for Toby's mental health and care. We pray for the health, healing, and care of Josue, Pepe, and Delia, Josie, and Jessica Hanna. For the reversion of Luke to the Catholic faith, as mom, Shelly, and pray for the poor souls in purgatory and those that have none to pray for them, for widows, orphans, and the abandoned, for the suffering, for those suffering from addiction, mental illnesses, oppression, and possession, especially those who feel hopeless and suicidal. We pray for the ill, the terminally ill, and their caretakers, for those suffering with infertility, for an end to abortion and IVF. A renewed respect for life, all stages, and for pro-life leaders and lawmakers. We pray for those grieving deep losses. Continue to pray for Rosemary and the repose of her mom's soul. For the unity of Christians and renewal in our church. And I pray for our, all of our families. I pray for my team, our online community at Little with Great Love and their intentions. We ask Mary to grow the community we're seeking to build here and all that have asked us to pray for them. I pray for Marian Pilgrim's past, present, and future. I pray especially for those that um, have listed their intentions, including those that are journeying right now. I pray for Christina. We pray for her son's transfer application to be accepted for her special intentions and her family, for Casey, for Caroline, for Anne, especially her daughter, for Mary, for Danielle. We're going to pray for Tammy, her prayers here, prayers for the women's retreat. She is running for our parish, for the mental health of my family, for my personal ministry, and a deeper call into action for herself. Yes, Lord. I pray for these graces for Tammy to be unleashed. And I also pray for the spiritual protection of all of those that are planning the retreat that will attend. And I pray for the Holy Spirit's stirring into grace your movements forward, almost like a um, like a KitchenAid mixer, right? We're just, the ingredients are there. We're just going to mix it up. <laughs> so we just ask for that grace, Lord. Holy activity. I pray for Natalie. I pray for Caitlin, her formation, and her family. We pray for Amanda, 
for Christine, her sons, discernment for college, deepening relationship with Jesus, for Sarah's healing, for her dad, William. I pray for Alma Sue, for her special intentions, for family, a continued recovery effort there in the Texas Panhandle from the wildfires. And pray for Teresa, Rosemary, Victoria, and Elizabeth. Well, do we have any other prayer intentions? Go ahead and list them. If not, we're going to move into our St. Joseph prayer here. I've continued saying that. We especially want to invoke his protection and lift up, lift up our fellas, lift up the men in our lives, in our communities, in the world. We want the blessing of a a, a spiritual leadership, especially in our homes. And for the graces for our husbands in particular. Let's pray this together. O oh, St. Joseph, whose protection is so great, so prompt, so strong before the throne of God, I place in you all my interests and desires. O oh, St. Joseph, do assist me by your powerful intercession and obtain for me from your divine Son all spiritual blessings through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that having engaged here below your heavenly power, I may offer my thanksgiving and homage to the most loving of fathers. O St. Joseph, I never weary contemplating you and Jesus asleep in your arms. I dare not approach while he reposes near your heart. Press him in my name and kiss his fine head for me and ask him to return the kiss when I draw my dying breath. St. Joseph, patron of departing souls, pray for me. Amen. So we're going to say our prayer to St. Augustine, found on page 94 tonight. That prayer is so beautiful. I love that one. <laughs> so um, remember to say that before you go to bed. Um, tomorrow we'll be back here, 9 a.m. Central, if you can make it. Um, also, I'll be planning to shoot out an email. It should be today. I'm trying to confirm a time that we could, if we could gather on Monday. You guys can let me know. Um, there's a couple of you I reached out to. Just get back to me about times. And we'll just try to throw up a time that most of us could make so we could pray some consecration prayers together. Um, not streaming here, but it would be if others can join me live, we'd have a meeting and we could talk a little bit about the fruits of the consecration, which I think would just be a really beautiful way to celebrate together. Really honor Our Lady, honor this time, honor this space. And uh, end well, right? Where we have some real time to commune and give thanks. So more to come on that. But let's sing our Salve Regina. All right. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Rita Dulcero. Et spes nostra salve, a te clamamus, et sulis fili heve, a te susperamus, gementes et flentes, in ac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, advocata nostra, I los tu los misericordes oculos a nos converte. E Jesu, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post exilium ostende. O clemens, o pia. Oh, dulcis Virgo Maria. Totus tuus, Mom, we are totally yours. It's been wonderful to pray with you today. Catch you tomorrow. And Our Lady, carry us onward. Amen. <laughs>